<laughs> we are in our second week of focus. Last week, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, we started with the foundation uh, when we talked about our thoughts. Paul uh, talked seriously about the things that we are thinking about and the importance of aligning our thoughts with Christ. And today we're going to be speaking about our eyes because of all the things that tend to lose focus within us. I think it's the eyes that go first. Let me give you an example. I know not very many of you, of you have ever been shopping with Michelle, my wife, but sometimes we're in the store and we are shopping together and I see something that I think is interesting and I go over and look at it and I turn around and she is gone and I have to search for her for at least two or three minutes to find her in the store. That may have happened to you. or. That, that's when my eyes are definitely distracting me. Or there was a time when I was 16 years old and had just gotten my driver's license and my insurance agent was walking on the sidewalk and I waved at him and ran into the car in front of me. True story. My insurance agent was also my high school Sunday school teacher at First Christian Church, Guthrie, Oklahoma. All, all true. Your eyes can distract you. Then um, one time it was the eyes and the stomach. John and I are at a Flying Squirrels game and he wants a Dippin' Dots ice cream. And, you know, we think the best thing to do is to run and get it during the pitching change. And, you know, we missed everything in the game. Sometimes you're at the football game, basketball, baseball, and you just see a bird fly by and you miss the play. I'm sure that's happened to you. Your eyes can distract you and you think, if only I'd stayed focused, I would have seen the home run. I wouldn't have gotten lost. I wouldn't have had my first accident. If only I had stayed focused. Today we're going to read a scripture that points out the importance of keeping your focus. And early on in this passage, uh, Jesus has fed the 5,000 people. And then he begins by asking the disciples to get in the boat and cross the lake. Let's read Matthew 14 beginning with verse 22. Immediately, he made the disciples get out into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he, Jesus, dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed them, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. And when evening came, he was there on the mountain alone. But by this time, the boat battered by the waves was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water and Jesus said come so Peter got out of the boat started walking on the water and came toward Jesus but when he noticed when he used his eyes and he looked around and he saw that he was walking on the water and he saw the strong wind and the waves Peter became frightened and he began to sink and he cried out, Lord, save me. And Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly you are the Son of God. 
the word of God for the people of God. The disciples were in a situation that I'm familiar with. I'll bet you're familiar with it too. Uh, everything's been going along great. And I've had my eyes on Christ. I've kept my eyes on God. And then a storm hits and it becomes a little harder to focus on him. Uh, and suddenly it's very difficult to see Christ through the storm. And I'm lost. Just like the disciples were lost, just like we get lost when we lose our focus. You know, 10 years ago, before coming to Virginia, I lost my focus. Uh, my family uh, were getting along okay, but, but I was on half pay, and I was thinking that there's something that I had must have done wrong because we're in this situation. And if I had just kept my focus on Christ, I would have known that you guys were looking for somebody and that this was a place that I was supposed to be. But for a year and a half, I was worried, thinking it's something I'd done, something I should have done. You know, there's a lot of different ways when you get afraid that you can react. For some of us, a storm causes us to focus on our past, thinking we caused this storm ourselves. And for others, a storm causes us to focus on the future. And we just don't know if we're going to have a future in the middle of the storm. And then for Peter and for the rest of the disciples, the storm caused him to be so anxious, to be so afraid in that present moment that they just didn't even know what they were going to do to respond. And I think what we can learn from that is that when we're faced in a storm, it's very important for us to have, to have made our decision beforehand about what we're going to do when we get in the storm. A lot of the anxiety we feel and the fear caused especially by this storm in Matthew was due to the disciples not knowing what they were going to do, not knowing how to respond. You know, we have to make the conscious decision to say, if and when a storm hits, we're going to keep our focus on Jesus Christ. We're going to keep our focus on God. Because when we take our eyes off Christ, we can get lost. Fear's not the only thing, though, in this story that we, that we hear about. In Peter and the disciples' situation, the storm itself became a distraction. Well, we are quite familiar with distractions in life, aren't we? We all experience distractions all the time. Jesus invited Peter in our story to get out of the boat. And what happened after he got out of the boat and started walking? He got distracted. They're the things that make it hard for us to, to get our lives in focus. Uh, for Peter, the distractions were the wind and the waves. But he did display faith in Jesus, didn't he? Jesus said, come. And Peter, he got right out of the boat and started walking. But then he lost his focus. Some of us today are living life like Peter. You know, we are faithful. We are responding when we hear God's call. But there are some of us who are still in the boat. We have not gotten out of the boat. We are stuck in the boat. What is keeping us there? Is it a fear of some kind? Is it a distraction? You know, is it a matter of being afraid that you're not going to fit in with some of your friends and neighbors? Why are you stuck in the boat? Peter understood that Jesus had the power to sustain him if only he would choose to get out of the boat and start walking. And so that's what, exactly what Peter did. Uh, he, he got out of the boat, he started walking, he got distracted. He began to sink. All these things were happening to Peter at the same time. And Jesus was there with him. And when he got refocused on Jesus Christ, 
Jesus picked him up and they got into the boat. Peter had faith initially when he stepped out of the boat and he started walking on the water. However, what was the third thing that made him lose focus? I mean, the first one, uh, we can understand fear, we can understand distractions, but then there's this third one that's mentioned in the scripture, and that was doubt. He got afraid, he got distracted, and then maybe he just didn't have that faith that we all need to keep his eyes in the middle of the storm focused on Jesus. Maybe today you're here and you have the same kind of questions that we read about in our Bibles, the same kind of doubts. God, are you really in the middle of this situation that's happening to me in my life? God, it feels like I'm being tossed by the wind and the waves. I've been distracted, God, by trouble. And I see all these things around me and, and it's leading me to have fear and to have doubt in my mind. And, you know, long, long before Jesus came on the scene in the New Testament, uh, the Bible actually promises something in Psalm 46 that I, I one of my favorite verses. God is our refuge and strength a very present help in times of trouble or always ready to help in times of trouble. In Peter's scenario, Jesus was close to him, but Peter only noticed the waves and the wind around him and lost focus on Jesus. And I wonder if that's not what happens to us too. We just don't think Jesus Christ is there with us and we lose our focus on God. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, I believe Jesus Christ is closer to you than you can ever realize. Because if you surrender your life to Christ, the Holy Spirit is within you. The Holy Spirit's within you all right now. And if you haven't surrendered your life to Christ, then you need the opportunity to do that. And we want to give the, you that opportunity right now. You know, today we have journeyed through the story about Peter and the 12 disciples caught in a storm. And a crucial part of this story is when Peter decides to take a step of faith, one that he took even though he was afraid, even though he was distracted, even though he had doubts. Peter knew that the only way to Jesus was stepping out of the boat. The world wants you to be comfortable and learn how to focus on earthly pleasures. But today, God wants to give you a new focus not on earthly pleasures, but on Jesus Christ. Jesus was placed on a cross to die. He was placed in a grave only to rise from the dead, amen, three days later, so that you and I could be free. We would have the opportunity to be closer to him than ever before. That is the focus that God offers to you. Will you accept Jesus and focus on him to lead you? Will you get out of the boat and avoid the fears, avoid the distractions, avoid the doubts and stay focused on Jesus? Let's pray together. God, I am so tempted to focus on things around me rather than to focus on you. And I know that you're my true guide in this world and that you deserve my complete focus. Help me to look up at you rather than to look down. Help me to allow you to guide every 
step of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.